Scrap to pages. I need to get Heroclix added as a, a gameplay thing on Facebook Gaming. I know, I tag it as Tab App. <laughs> I know, Tab App. Or what's Tab App ASM? Like, I guess Amazing Spider-Man? Was there a separate uh, Tab App for that? I, I don't know anything about Tab App. Uh, yeah, me neither. But, I'm lying to you about anything. But I, I'll, I'll, I'll Tab it as that, sure. Alright, let me share this link. Ooh, pause myself. I need, don't want to hear myself. sent me a text how dare she well she's getting us food unacceptable like this is 2021 who eats for real Tyler would say that we should all just get Soylent or whatever It's like one of those. I'm gonna agree. That one of those uh, dietary, uh, like dietary supplement type things, supposedly has all of your. And you know, one of our live streams wouldn't be fair if we didn't start out with talking about food a little bit. Mm. But it's one of those things you could eat, and it gives you like everything you need for the day. But it's like a liquid form. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not about that life. I like food too much. I'd rather be fat. Yeah, I'm right there with you. All right, we'll let some more people chime in. We got five people. We'll get a few more before we start. I said we'd start at 7.30, so might as well be nice and wait till 7.30. Got so much to talk about. So much I couldn't put together a slideshow. There was just too much. I may have to, like, randomly leave. That's I'm fine. Really Should be good for a while. I need to figure out how to mute myself. Stupid allergies. Yeah. Allergies suck. So I don't that, have them, so I don't actually know. But. I didn't have them for the longest time, and now I do. Can I turn PJ up a bit? Yeah, I can turn him up a bit. I can also just talk a little louder. Brian says no slides. I'm out. Sorry, Brian. It just there's just too much, man. There's, I'm out too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I I just can't. I thought I thought about it. I thought about like, all right, let me let me divvy up a, a cool slideshow. It's like okay, where do I start? Like there, I could talk about all the the powers that changed or the rule book or or whatever. There's just too much. I haven't even really thought about, like, all right, how does WWE play into this? Like, I really haven't thought about WWE at all. Uh, I don't think very many people have. Yeah, but, I mean... Let's be real here. Actually, all, the biggest change, I guess, is that the fact that all the stuff can knock things back now, like charge and combat reflexes doesn't prevent knockback. So that's bad for WWE. Prevented that anyway, right? 
Or is that good for WWE? Because now you can rel it like easily knock think things it back. Side grade, right? Like I don't think it matters that much because like they could already knock stuff back that couldn't be knocked back. That's true. I guess I mean could like I guess in the in the normal universe, not like in a like I don't know. I'd have to. I I honestly just haven't looked at it. So I I mean we're not getting. WWE Wave 2 until September, so... Yeah, I know. I don't personally care, but I feel bad for the people who are really excited for that. Yeah, I, I'm always excited about new figures, no matter where they come from. So As long as Randy Orton has a sideline active, that is really all I care. That's fair. That's fair. He better have an RKO out of nowhere, or I won't support that set. All right, so we are up to about eight viewers. That's pretty good. Um, oh, my brother-in-law's here. Hi, brother-in-law, Michael. Um, anyway, we are talking today about the new rule book. Well, the new core rule book and the new pack. I don't call it the PAC. I just call it the pack. That's easier for me. Um which do you want to talk about first, rule book or pack? Is it easier to talk rule book or is it easier to talk pack? Um, it's probably easier to talk pack. Yeah, the pack does answer some questions you would assume would be in the rule book, and, but and it's I'm gonna, on the pack. Like this is gonna sound bad, but I think the pack is like they put more time into writing it. Yeah, with the websites. Like there's very few, in my opinion. Yeah, it, it clearly looks like it. Man, this... I gotta open it in Acrobat. The, the Google Chrome's freaking out over the stupid pack. <laughs> oh, there we go. We'll zoom in a little bit. Alright. So we're gonna start with the pack. Uh, so today, for anybody that doesn't know and doesn't know why we're streaming... And PJ was super nice to join me today to talk about it. Um, and can you guys see that? I zoomed in a little bit. It should be a little better. Um, so the reason we're talking is because, surprise, Scott Porter dropped the pack and the rule book today. Um, everyone kind of hopped in thinking we were just going to get a two-booster video. And we did get that later. But we ultimately got the Battlegrounds, which had all of this in there. Um, I was very surprised. I didn't know we were just going to bam see it um definitely check out the video if you haven't checked it out yet um the pack uh, the pack and the the rules book look beautiful by the way and you'll see that when we show some of the pictures way better than this like i have current core rule book here it makes me want to look at it yeah yeah definitely it's like it's it looks beautiful i i love it and it's definitely something to like looking at what that looks like and then looking at this little book, this little uh, like twenty-something page, thirty-something page black and white book. Oh yeah, I would much rather read that. But we're gonna start everything off with the caveat that we're gonna talk about some of the things that are missing from the pack or missing from the rule book. We are assuming we are going to get some sort of comprehensive rule book or something that answers what we're missing. But we're gonna try to inform you guys on what we're missing. Because we could be in a world where we don't get answers, and we have to abide by these new rules, and yep. man, yeah, that'd be crazy. Uh, so TJ, we will get to your question about windows and doors and all that stuff. Um, well, actually, windows and doors and all of that are gone. Yeah, Brian Gailey just chimed in. Yeah, windows and doors are gone. Um, hindering is no longer a, a movement based thing it's just a line of fire based thing yep. so that's something that was covered in a previous rules article um so where do you want to start pj um i think it's probably i don't know we could probably skip speed powers they've been out longer but at the same time i don't think anybody streamed about it so yeah, so we did see the the speed powers a couple days ago. You you posted a really nice typed up thing for those who can't read because um, it was very um, yeah, it was blurry. Super. Yeah, <laughs> I was actually concerned 
now that I see the mind control part, I was actually concerned that they somehow went crazy and said that min maximum range six for mind control because the words looked like it could have been either. Right. And I was like, are they insane? Like they're like mind control's too powerful. Let's do maximum. But no, it's minimum. They boosted everything at the minimum. But um, there's no super crazy things out here. Um, <clears throat> like all but two. All but one power change? Two powers. Two yeah, powers stayed with it. Yeah, and, and, and keep in keep in mind we are we are assuming all of you that are watching has kept up with the rules articles. So we're not gonna talk about things that were covered in the rules articles, like what happened to improve movement Henry. And now if you have a direct question about that, we'll answer your direct question. We're just not gonna cover it naturally, because we assume everybody's read the articles the, that we've had for the past two to three weeks. So Yep. Um, charge, I guess, was the biggest first one, right? Uh, yes, that wasn't talked about, yeah. Yeah, that's the one, a power action, half speed, move, then close as free. So that's... Which, yeah. Go ahead. It's not that much different, right? They're, they're changing at no cost to be as free, once again. Yeah. So. I think they realized their folly in making it no cost, because that just had a lot of isolated incidences where at no cost just caused problems. And they may have found themselves where they're like, we don't have a lot of instances where we can do no cost without it being crazy. Well, and I think it falls in line with kind of what they want to do with the game by making it simpler. Mm -hmm. Like having something, well, is it free or at no cost? Like, shut up. <laughs> like... <laughs> I'm happy there's just one. Like, I think they did a good job trying to clean up a lot of the language. Yeah, and you'll see that a lot of the duplicating language that existed is gone. A lot of... They've got cut down on some of the words. If you uh, pick up the pack and look at it compared to the old one, you'll see some of the phrases say the exact same thing, but they've sh uh, shortened it up. They got rid of some of the wordiness. And unfortunately, in some of these powers, that actually causes a little bit of issue. Um... But overall, charge and running shot, they now go from, you know, take your respective action as no cost. They just basically got rid of no cost altogether. It's not in there. They wrote an article about it uh, mentioning that uh, certain figures that relied on at no cost will still be able to do so. I'm still curious about that. Um, like Vulture, I don't know if he'll still work. Um, because they, they mentioned specifically... Figures that have certain powers at no cost can still use no cost. The, it's so, just... What I'm curious about with him is, like, I think he'll still be able to keep charging, but I don't think he can do anything, like, if the close that you're granted from charge is a free, there's only so many things you can do until you've already done it, right? So he could, like, flurry once and then basic attack once and then be done? Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm thinking, because if you base it off of their... Their response saying, oh, they'll still be able to uh, free action. Um, or, the, I'm sorry, they'll still be able to use at no cost. Well, sure, he can use charge at no cost. But charge is you use a close action, it's free. Like, so, so Vulture, his power didn't change. Charge changed. Yep. So that, that, because there was, <laughs> my daughter's yelling at the door. Um <laughs> There's basically, there were two no costs for Vulture. His power and Charge's power. But now yep. Charge's change, so I don't know. That's kind of iffy. Right. Do you want to talk a little bit about Plasticity while I go handle my sure, daughter yeah. real quick? I, uh, so just to touch base, minimum range on Mind Control Lab, right? I think. Minimum range 6, I think it was 4. But now it's 6, cool. That's it. But Plasticity is significantly different. Um, it grants the character who has it. Um, they break down anything but a one. And then the major difference is adjacent opposing characters that can can't use phasing, plasticity, leap climb, or hypersonic only break away on a six. So instead of leap climb, hypersonic, plasticity, giving plus two to break away, it's just all lumped into plasticity instead of the other powers. So they just kind of moved the wording. Um, but the interesting part that people need to keep in mind is you don't have to actually activate phasing, leap climb, or hypersonic to get the bonus on the breakaway. 
you can if you have one of those powers and you sidestep, then it it, it counts. So it you know it, like that's a big a big change, right? So you're not it's not quite as effective because passive effects get you out of there a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But like I don't know the fact that you can sidestep break away and still get the bonuses is huge to me. That's that's nice. Yeah, breakaway, oh, man. I think I, that's going to be one of the biggest changes. Like, I don't, what am I? Am I like? Am I crazy that the fact I don't think it's any different? Well, the what fact that I, you can, the fact that you can break away, you fail, and you can still do something. Oh, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I meant like the the dice part of it. Oh, like nothing. I don't think anything changes. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, like, like I was saying, like when you first walked off, they lumped the wording from Leap Climb Hypersonic and Plasticity, well, I guess, into Plasticity, right? Like the, the plus two to Breakaway. Mm -hmm. It lumped into that. Yeah, well, the only other difference is Hypersonic. Well, it's... Hypersonic always gave plus two to Breakaway, right? Right, but you could still fail break away with that but now you don't have to break away at oh all, yeah right? well, I'm, I'm talking about plasticity sorry so sorry yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, um, it, the breakaway changes are great yeah i mean i like the idea that you can now <laughs> like yeah. if i charge and break away why can't i still punch the thing that's right next to me yeah and, <laughs> and I feel, why can't i just punch it yeah, and their whole pro the whole thought process behind all these changes they've mentioned before is they want the game to go a little bit faster. They don't want you to have to sit here and debate forever. They don't want it to be so many penalties. Like they want it to be a free flowing game. And charge breakaway was always one of those like, all right, it's a gutsy call, but it's my only move. If it doesn't work out, I'm hosed. And so right. you wouldn't make that move that often. But this way, it's like, hey, if I'm now running shot breakaway is still risky because unless you shoot out of adjacency you're hosed um but i had a good point um i forgot to mention that uh plasticity doesn't stop people with like flight anymore right so, right 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 or hypersonic for that matter yeah i think it's kind of a wash with plasticity i don't think it got better i don't think it got worse i, I think it's... personally think it got worse but just not drastically if that makes sense yeah um, we won't talk about Force Blast, because that is more related to knockback changes, which... Uh, uh, Force Blast changed a lot, though. Go ahead, then. <laughs> uh, power minimum range 6 knockback and opposing... Oh, uh, that's true. That's knockback. true. It's not adjacent anymore. That's right. Right. Yeah, it's a 6 range, and we got to knock you back 3 squares. Like, that's big. <laughs> and, and as we skipped over with Charge a little bit, and you'll see on the rest of the powers, the ones that stopped it, there's nothing that prevents knockback. As far as I could mm -hmm. tell, that is correct. Yeah, so it's not like I've got charge because I felt like one of the size. biggest. Say what? Size, if you're bigger. Yeah, 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 yeah. But... Yeah, I'm sorry, I meant powers. Um, right, right. Just, yeah, I'm trying to be full disclosure here. <laughs> right. So for me, it's that was always the detriment is that I felt like anytime I really wanted to knock back, I always ended up in situations where I just couldn't, or I'd have to waste one of my outwits. And that's the worst, to just knock them back. I mean, there are instances where that's great. But there are instances where I'm like, man, I don't want to waste an outwit to knock them back to then go do something. So, I, I don't... Now, I'm in the wheelhouse that I don't like that they got rid of knockback damage. I do think there's instances that, that that's a good thing. Um, yeah. I don't think these are enough buffs to knock back to make, to make up for that. But I think Force Blast is a lot better. Um, I just yep. don't, I don't like knockback as much now. But we'll see. We'll see. I maybe now that I can knock things back easier, maybe I'll I'll like it more. Um, side step is the same. Hypersonic is the same. Um, outside of the plus two thing we were talking about, uh, right. it's no longer and plus. Wording that I cleaned up. But. Yeah, the wording cleaned up. You no longer have to worry about, like, you just automatically break away from anything that doesn't have plasticity, right? No. Improvement, uh, isn't that what the improved movement means? Uh, that's move through. Move, move through. through. Oh, they yeah. still must break away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's actually worse now. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you have Sorry. to you only break away on you have to roll a four, five, or six to break yeah. away hybrid. Yeah. Which is good for I don't know, I'm torn I'm torn on that because man, nothing fell well, you can still make the attack if you fail the breakaway. So that's kind of a That's true. Yeah. You got basically yeah. got two shots to move away too, right? Or ooh yeah, you do? Yeah, for sure. I'm trying to think of how they worded breakaway. That move ends, but not end all moves. Yeah. Okay. So, because it does not end the action anymore. Yeah. So now it's less about uh, rolling that one to when you try to break away. Like, okay, you miss the breakaway roll. You still get to punch. Maybe not the person you wanted to punch, but then you get a second shot at moving away after you attack. And you your whole speed, yeah. Yeah, so it's not that bad. I think it's uh, I think it's good for people going against hypersonic. I feel like a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Hypersonic is one of those bad. Well, hypersonic's one of those ones that we gotta wait and see how all. Like, funny thing enough is the pack and the rule book do, doesn't really explain a hundred percent how all these powers work together since they did the article. Like, I feel like there's still some instances that need to be cleared up. Um, I think we have a lot more things now that work with hypersonic than what we did before. Like, yeah. you can hypersonic Tensai, right? Now, and that's huge. Yeah. You can, you can hypersonic multi-target precision strike. Yep. If you wanted to. And so. Tensai. All together. Yeah. Just cut. Yeah, why not? <laughs> So yeah, Hypersonic got a buff with all those changes, but then I think this is a, a an okay nerf. You're, you get penalized if you get tripped up trying to break away, but you got two shots, and you still get to do stuff, so I think it's fun. And I think it helps make tie-up matter, right? It helps the strategy part, right? It's not just like, I can go base your Hypersonic piece with literally anything now, mm -hmm. and it helps me. Like, it's not just like, well, maybe you have this like 13%, 16% chance of failing, but... No, now it's a distinct possibility that I'm picking what you attack for you. Right. So I think it's a good level, a good level of strategy against hypersonic that we didn't have before. Exactly. Um, so. Then we've got stealth. Stealth was a big buff, um, not to stealth, but <laughs> <laughs> to everyone against stealth. Um, the one and of the I'm biggest. Just... Go ahead. <laughs> It just makes sense. Like, you can go ahead and read it. I'm just saying it's just finally. Yeah, I, I remember this was one of the first things when I started playing Heroclix. And I think it's almost everybody's first thing when they play Heroclix. When it's not your turn, hindered lines of fire drawn to this char character by non-adjacent characters are blocked. So the main difference there is, is now, if I'm adjacent to you, I can draw a line of fire to you. And you might think, well, what does that matter? Well, it does for mostly Outwit. I think Outwit's the major one. Now, Perplexes, uh, Probs, like, those matter. Um, and there's other instances. But Outwit was the biggest one because you would sit here next to someone in a bush and you're like, why can't I Outwit his stealth? I see him right there. Or like, Perplex him or whatever. You know? Exactly. Like, it's like, you can't prop... Well, I guess you could prop him. It would be their turn. So you, you yeah, could always yeah. prop yeah, you could probably. So it was mostly outwit and perplex. Well, or just like if you have shoots out of adjacency, you could move up and shoot them, like running shot next to them and shoot them. Like it, it never made sense to explain to people why can I reach out and touch you, but I can't see you. Right. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. So this was one of those that it just makes sense because they're clearing up. It helps with new players because it's just like why? What? What's the purpose? Is this like a is this that was the part that made stealth unstoppable or uh, no i mean if someone's getting in your grill and outwitting you i mean that should be fine here hold on just another second pj you can go ahead and talk about uh move into attacks if you want yep all right so yeah running shots for you we already talked about so we'll move into attacks um lots of changes here i think everything but poison and steel energy um everything else changed um super strength technically didn't but i'll talk about that a little bit um so blade claws fangs um used to be during a close capital close um but now it is not so you can use it during any old attack so you can hypersonic blades now which you couldn't before 
Um, so that's important to know. If you have a free attack while you have blades, you can use it then. Um, it is contingent on a single target, so you can't like multi-target quake and blades. So that's good, good foresight there. Um, not really much else to talk about because otherwise it's the same. Um, it is a instead of normal damage for what that's worth. Um, energy explosion has some weird wording, but I think we all know what it means. Um, range, make a range attack, and all other characters adjacent become targeted. Hit characters dealt two damage instead of normal damage. So, <laughs> the wording is becoming different about this. It, it says all other characters adjacent become targeted. It doesn't say adjacent. So, it's assumed. It's really obvious that they mean adjacent to the target. But, if they want it to be clear for new people, that needs to be in there. So, slap of the hand to whiz kids. Bad. Um, and that's really it, though. So now, wave. Oh, pulse wave. Um, so, for the most part, it's the same, right? It's still half range. Still gives you the improved targeting that you got. Um, still shuts off the powers and abilities. Um, same targeting. However, with this wording, it says if one plus characters were targeted, each hit character is dealt damage. One damage. Unfortunately, one plus means one or more. So if you targeted anyone, they're dealt one damage. Period. That means. With this wording, there is no such thing as single target pulse wave. Oh. So, that's uh, unfortunate. Uh, Tyler, yeah, I was going to talk about that when we got to end cap. Sorry about that. My youngest is um, stubborn. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on pulse wave, talking about how single target pulse wave doesn't exist. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I was yeah. talking about that earlier to uh, Brian, Brian Gailey. Um, yeah, as written right now, it doesn't work. It, the way it's written doesn't feel like that's intent. Because um, if they were written, writing it that way, then they should have written it just like energy explosion, like hit characters are dealt two damage instead of normal damage. But they didn't write it that way. Now that could still be I, I their intent. But I don't hate that it says doesn't say instead of normal damage. Let's be, because that means you could replace it with something. True, that's true. So I, I'm glad that's not there because then you get really weird. Like I'm going to activate pulse wave, but I'm going to use like in cap instead right. of damage. Like, right. I, not not that that's good necessarily, but I don't want you to be able to substitute pulse wave. It should just be pulse. But I don't think it meant to be one plus. <laughs> yeah, there's should have been two plus or, and you'll see later when we talk about steel energy. I mean, if you're arguing, well, one plus means more than one. Well, steel energy also has one plus. So what? You can only steal energy when you target two people. Also, to be blunt, anyone who thinks one plus means more than one doesn't know what one plus means. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> It means one or more. That is just literally what it means. Yeah. <laughs> so it, that's just one of those that, that that's unfortunate. And, and they did the same thing with Quake. Now, you were making the, the comment before, well, obviously you just could choose not to do Quake, um, which is true. I, I think Quake didn't really change, personally. I think, I mean, so it changed when you're using it for as free or like with Richter, where it requires the use of Quake. Right. Otherwise, no doubt. I, I feel like the single... Hold on. Uh, so this is why it, it, it doesn't change, right? Because knockback got moved outside of the use of the power. So if you have quake, you have knockback. So if I want to use a single target quake, quote unquote, I will charge and punch you. And then it will knock you back. That is That is what single target quake is. Yeah, I guess it, I think it just... I think what changes, though, is those that can use... And I think this goes for all the figures that have any of these powers that are now more passive than active, is that when they can use it for free. So like anybody, well, and they sure. and they mention they're fixing those, right? They're going to either errata them or they work as they did before. 
Yeah, it'll hurt like Mighty Thor, Fast Horses, Hulk. It'll hurt Richter, Quake. Uh, it'll hurt Gorilla Grodd, who can like leap climb and use Quake as free. Right. Um, stuff like that. But I think that's minimal. Um, but I think this wording is much more concise and clear. Gotcha. Um, yeah, and so I, I think it's okay trade. Yeah, it, it's just another one of those where it's like I don't know why they bothered with the if one plus characters were targeted, but I, I get it. It's it's clear. It's just one of those like I think that's yeah. how it was worded before or something similar, and I don't know if they just copied it. it well, it wasn't worded the one plus. They had like one or more characters or or more than one more character. More than one character. Yeah. Yeah. So it feels like to me what happened in this instance is that. Um, they just put in one plus when it says more than one character, except for Steel Energy. And I guess they just didn't realize that they kind of contradict themselves a little bit. But um, Super Strength, about the same. Nothing. Uh, so while you were gone, I did say that there is an actual like small difference with this, but it's because of the rule book, not the power. Mm-hmm. Um, heavy objects don't deal extra damage anymore. Yes, that is true. I was, yeah, that's in the rule book. It's kind of dumb. Um, I guess it's just now they're objects that only certain people can pick up. Well, yeah. So, like, super strength was already bad. Like, probably the worst power in the game, in my opinion. Um, and now it's worse. So, okay. I mean, it's good in the instances that you had heavy objects, heavy equipment but, that you needed yeah, picked up. But you can but just play TK, right? That's true. Mangog remembers this, so that was the one good thing about yeah. Mangog. It's like he's got super strength; he can go pick up heavy things <laughs> and then die. Uh, that's how it happened a lot. Um, yeah, and I don't think do they. And I haven't even actually looked at that. Um, Let's see, where's my rule book? What are they, you looking for? They mentioned throwing objects. Do they mention you could throw heavy? Right um, well, okay. actually, no, it'd be a ranged combat action. Yeah, it'd be a ranged object attack, which object attack, I don't even think is... Yeah, ranged object right. attack yeah. action. Yeah, so it's the same. Two damage instead of normal, so... Yeah, so... Like. I guess... There's no difference between the two as far as damage goes. It's yeah. just literally... There is no reason to ever play a standard heavy object other than to provide hindering terrain. Or, well, no, I would say also if you are in an instance where you're playing someone who has easy access to super strength. But, like, what's the the upside, right? Like, why would you not just play a light? Because then anyone on your team could... Well, right, I, I'm thinking, okay, so you can no longer steal objects with TK, like opposing objects. Oh, you can move them, right? No, I, mean, like... you, I don't think you could target it. That was the thing, um, unless they changed it. No, TK, or a friendly single base character or object within range and line of fire. Yeah, you can still move their object. I don't think you can, can you? Sure, why not? Or object within range and line of fire. And well, it, and once again, this is one of those, the friendly <laughs> part. Is it only friendly single base character, or is it a friendly object as well? Uh, it would be just friendly single base character. Okay. Um, yeah, you can still move their You just can't destroy it with TK anymore. Right. You can't make an object attack into a blue. So I guess I, I'm thinking in those instances, like, you would want... It's still useful for, like, the objects that are heavy. Um, it's still useful for if you are playing just a Hulk and... And Brian actually mentions heavy objects don't hinder line of fire anymore. Uh, um, yeah, they yeah they do. I, I read that in there. I'm pretty confident it's still there. Uh, where would it be? I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure I read it. All right, all right, all right. Let's find it. Be under line of fire rules. And a hinder line, so it'd have to say something about heavy objects hindering line of fire. It does. And I'm trying to remember where. Um. Um, page eleven. Oh, is it in a description of someone using a heavy object? 
No, I might be wrong. I could have swore I just read this. Maybe I'm maybe I'm mistaken. Well, I mean, it just gives you kind of a lackluster description of a heavy object anyway, so... Yeah, once for... Well, hold on, Brian. We're not sure we're right about this or not. I, yeah, I, I could have swore that I read that. Because, like, I read through the rule book, like, I, literally every word in it. Yeah. And... Um, let me look up the... Maybe it might have been in the pack. Hold on. Yeah, I'm looking at the pack again. Hmm. Yeah, Robert Valentine says it specifically states it. Oh, here it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. and otherwise it's in range. Of ah, I found. Yeah, I found it too. Yeah. I, could, I knew I read it somewhere. <laughs> All right, so see, there's a bonus. <laughs> so that's that. Yeah. Uh, but still, yeah, no, nah, that's yeah, not. that's what I was saying. Like I, to me, that is the only reason you would play a, a standard heavy object. Special object, sure, do whatever you want to do. Right. But standard, I wouldn't like. It's there's no upside to it, right? It's like. I'm just hard pressed to ever want to play that, other than the like self providing, right? Right. All right. Anyway, let's talk about in cap. Um, yep. Poor in cap. Like it's better, but it's worse. It has to be easier, but it's way worse. Like, like Tyler mentioned earlier, energy explosion in cap is probably the best instance that you can use in cap. Sure, if they all have invulnerability. <laughs> like, right, I, I, right. I'm, I'm gonna just want to hit for two. But I, I also think. Cool? Well, I, I also think there might be instances where if they've moved up and they're all tokened up, you're like, all right, let me just knock them all down. Because like, yeah, there's no pushing damage, so I mean, who cares if they get two tokens? But that might... yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it seems so weird. Um, I can see it like. I don't know if you like multi-target mind control and like you're targeting one that you just don't care about. Well, that no. also that also it's depends on how up. that also oh, depends on how they control. rule on normal damage. Because before it says you could just choose, but I don't know if that's a you could choose individually. No, because this says each hit character. So like I think that one will will take all. So you won't yeah. be able to pick and choose. I'm, I'm just wrong. That'd be sweet, but... <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Then it'd be... Oh. Um, now, all right, going back to Energy Explosion real quick, because I just realized this. Um, how many people do you think are going to be annoying, like with... I don't know if you mentioned this, like with Dark Phoenix and all of those stupid powers where they referenced all other characters adjacent? Do you think anyone's going to argue about that? You know what I'm talking um, about? Like her retail said, you know, target the person who damaged and everyone adjacent. And there was that big debate for a while. They're like, do I, you mean adjacent I, to I, Phoenix? I, I, <laughs> yeah. Or adjacent no, to the I, figure? And we know it's adjacent to the figure, but. um, I think this will actually probably get cleared up. I hope um, so. But uh, I, somebody will argue it somewhere. I mean. Yeah, and that's the fun of hero clips sometimes. But realistically, I don't. There's not going to be very many situations where they would want to argue that because that means if they're wanting to energy explode out of themselves, then they would be based on something. Yeah. But I guess if your opponent is energy exploding you, you might be like, nope, can't. <laughs> so incapacitate. Or, I don't. We don't think is. It's not better. It's. It just got worse because of the nerf. Like if they just if didn't. You have something that's flurry in incap. It gets interesting. Especially being able to dual target, like, use your targets for close right. attacks. Yeah, you can token, like, token someone down completely with a flirt. Uh, you could target, well, you could do that for multiple people, too, right? Or, right. Yeah. Right. So, that, so that's a benefit. Um, and no, uh, Dionisio, uh, we haven't, we actually haven't gotten to the rule book yet. We're just starting with the pack. This is going to be a decently long stream with how much we got to talk about. Um, <laughs> Like, I feel like with in-cap, if they had just left the whole, if they've got two tokens, deal right. them one damage, then in-cap would be gravy. And like, they could have even made it not penetrating damage. Yeah. They could have done a damage. 
Exactly. And then it's still playable. Um, but right now, it's just if. So, Pensai, we already knew that change was coming. Great change. Um, okay. Smoke Cloud. So, okay. So, <laughs> as, as of currently, because there's no rules stating this, and this is one of those, maybe we should do, like, this is an asterisk. Like, this is... We're going to describe rules that currently don't have a resolution to them that we are expecting. Like it could the, be. <laughs> right. So, as of right now, if we didn't get a comprehensive rule book, Smoke Cloud is awesome. Believe it is it. amazing. <laughs> and the reason being is because, as of right now, there are no rules stating that you cannot put another terrain marker or anything on blocking in the current rule book it says with blocking terrain uh another terrain marker or something can't be placed on it i believe is what it's right and that's under the rule of occupancy right um currently the rule of occupancy is not limited and i'll show you currently limited to just characters that's the only time that they actually mentioned sorry it was in the pack um it's on the next page. Rule of occupancy. Two or more characters can never occupy the same square if a non-optional effect would place two characters. Blah, 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 blah. It only talks about characters. It doesn't talk about blocking terrain at all or anything about not being able to put anything in there. So as of right now, you can use Smoke Cloud to override a barrier or a blocking terrain or anything because there's nothing to prevent you from putting that marker. Now, you still have to draw a line of fire to the first one. So you can't just erase everything because you can't draw a line of fire to that blocking you would have to yeah, draw a line cool. of fire adjacent and then put in yeah. the smoke cloud this creates an interesting problem and why i think it will get changed is that if i put smoke cloud down on top of a piece of blocking i should then be able to go stand on it what happens when the smoke cloud goes away yeah we know that you can't occupy blocking we also know you can't do things that knowingly violate the rule of occupancy so I don't, I don't think this is going to stick, but as of right now, you can absolutely place hindering markers on top of block. And, and the reason we're talking about this is because there is a universe, I, I like to believe in multiple universes type scenario, there might be a universe that, that this sticks. <laughs> like this, They're like, well, we didn't actually prepare a comprehensive, we're going to have to come out with another one uh, in a couple months, you're going to have to deal with this until then. Yeah. And, and that could that could happen. So, um, it's very unlikely to happen, but it could. So, as of right now, you could smoke cloud and get rid of barrier. And yes, you will have the question about what happens if you stand in it and the and the smoke cloud goes away. Um, the rule of occupancy, I believe, is in the rule book, whereas here they actually have it on the pack. I don't think they have it on the old pack. No, it's not on the old pack. Um, you have to now like really dig to find it. They've already moved the old pack to like previous versions, so. Um, but yeah, that's that. That's why there's that caveat. Otherwise, smoke cloud is just kind of as how it always been. Uh, it's meh. It should have always been a free power, but you know. At least that's my opinion. It should have always been a free action. I'm with you. Yes, it should be a free action. It should be like three squares or four. Yeah. I have a kiddo on my lap right now, so you might hear some. No, that's fine. Um, Precision Strike is great. They basically only change is they remove the limitation of being a single target. So it works with you can triple target Precision Strike. You can Pulse Wave preci uh, Precision Strike. You can Energy Explosion Precision Strike. Yep. You could do all sorts of stuff with Precision Strike. Which is how it used to work, right? Like I'm not remembering some old times that didn't exist. You could multi-target Precision before, right? I feel like you could, yeah. The key one uh, is Precision Strike. Dan mentioned this. Is this Precision Strike Pulse Wave is good um, if you only have those powers and you can't use Pensai uh, because that helps with the retal. Um, yeah. But Pensai, you're most likely going to have. I forget who he said. Exodus. Exodus, I think, has Pulse Wave and Precision yeah. Strike. So, something to keep in mind there. Uh, poison's the same. Steel Energy is the same it's just they reworded it that one plus thing um i think that's actually in the current pack 
I think that's how Steel Energy is worded. Uh, I haven't pulled that one. It, it might say one or more, but... Yeah, what, when it damages one or more opposing characters with a so close attack. that's more proof that one plus means one or more. You heard that in your quote. That's interesting. They remove... I mean, I guess there's no instances... <coughs> excuse me. Where you could damage your own characters. And well, I guess with Flash and Human Torch and a few others. Yeah. They remove the opposing from that. Right. So if you damage a friendly with an attack, you're good. Because it's not hit. It's hit and damage. Right. So Flash... Oh. Starter Flash could technically steal energy off his own people. Correct. Don't know why you would. Support's way better. Regen's way better. But right. if you screw up, you could still steal energy. So... Yep. We won't go into the TK changes. That's gr drastically changed. You can no longer make object attacks with TK. You can't do a bunch of some other stuff. It's Which is good because the whole being able to pick up your object and just throw it away was super annoying. Um, at least in my, my view, I get why you could do that, but I always thought it was silly. Um, like, comic book-wise, that makes sense. Like, picking up your dangerous object and just throwing it away and destroying it that kind of makes sense but yeah yeah um so your defensive powers so really not much in the way of changes in defensive Three? power um combat reflex yeah combat reflex reflex yeah, barrier. reflexes change mm -hmm. barrier got the bump to range and um the uh place wherever it doesn't have a clear right where limitation Right, you could any distinct uh, squares within ch uh, range. Um, Mastermind, I believe, is word for word the same. Yeah. Uh, willpower, we already know the changes to willpower. Invincible got a pretty hefty nerf. But if you take that into context of the change to perplex, it's not yep. as big of a nerf, but it's still And you won't. can't RCE 2 to damage anymore. Like Right. I think overall damage being dealt is going to be reduced drastically, especially if Pulse Wave caught that nerf. Um, so, uh, I think it's fine. Um, I actually was expecting the opposite. I thought Invincible was only going to make max damage 3. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I was completely backwards on that one. Well, I'm, I'm okay with the change. I've always yeah. felt that Invincible was had become too powerful. Where you're like, Invincible, yeah, Impervious, ah. Like, it just felt right. bad. Like, you're like, I only want Invincible. Toughness, Invulnerability, Impervious, they all suck. I only want Invincible. Because everyone's right. got penetrating damage. And they're actually going to have, everyone's going to have more penetrating damage. But, um... Uh -huh. I yeah. think Invincible becomes even more desirable with how the change to peak uh, inside. Yeah, I guess that's that's fair. Um, but now and removing the ca removing the cap, I think is good because if you if you got a tent pole, Omega, for example, she goes all in and she gets all those combat values and she hits you and you're like, ha ha, three damage sucks for you. It's like if I if I'm able to in this new world where damage isn't easily raised, able to get to like six or seven damage. I should be able to get a payoff for that. Like, yeah. So that's the point. Uh, impervious is the same. Regen is the same. Invulnerability, mm -hmm. the same. No changes. Yeah. Um, damage wise, uh, battle fury is different. Yeah. So we're skipping range combat X. We're combat X. Uh, close combat. We know those changes. Um, battle fury is different because they now say you can't be given action tokens by opposing effects. As opposed to specifically saying in cap, and I forget the other one. Was it just in well, cap? Well, it is still safeguard mind control. Right. It still does protected mind control. But right. it is better. Um, one just can't be given action tokens by opposing effects, so that stops like Injustice League and stuff like that. Or whatever the uh, trait's called. Right. Yeah, that it protects against that, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. It's the first instance of seeing safeguard, which is one of the new key phrases. They remember they had capitalized protected and little protected. And so it's like I, I don't know why safeguard is all capped. 
think it, they could have just had it look normal, but it's fine. Like, that's just me being piggy. I'm glad they picked a different word. Well, I think it may also help because now you can equate giant safeguard to giant protect. Right. I, I, yeah, I mean, I get it. Like, that's fine. Like I said, I'm just being picky. Yeah. Well, I'm about, I'm going to get picky a little bit later, so. Um, exploit, we know, now works with every close attack. Enhancement works the way it does, except it also now works with range destroy, which is somewhat relevant. Um, Very relevant with the perplex change. Yes. With the perplex change, it now helps when you're making a range destroy. And remember, it had to be worded that way because destroy actions aren't attacks. So if you're wondering why do they have to bother with that. Um, prob is the same, I believe. Um, yep. Shape change is the same. Um, yep. Close combat, don't need to talk about it. Empower works the same as enhancement, but for close. Perplex, we already know the changes to perplex. It's now everything but damage. Like, you could choose any of them but damage, which is a big, big deal. Um, outwit, same. And leadership, we know, is the same also, I believe. So, all, yeah, yeah. No, no <laughs> I'm rereading it real quickly because I'm like, wait, no, they're they're the same. And yes. for what it's worth, also the blue text under these last two blocks are all stuff that we knew. Yeah, the basic rules, moving and ranged attacks, all of it is exactly what it used to be. Nothing. I, I like that it's on the pack. Yes, absolutely. Like, you could take the pack and be able to under, relatively understand the game of Hero Clicks. Like, yep. like, you might need some things with, like, elevation and whatnot to figure out, but if you don't have the rulebook and you have the pack, you can get through a lot more of the game than I feel like you could before, because they added... The addition of the golden and silver rule. Exactly. Um, so we're not going to go through the inherent abilities, because they don't change, no. really. Except the object actions we've mentioned before. Whatever object you're holding, plus one damage. That's it. And, and once and again... Then, oh, go ahead. And, and a ranged one is just two damage, period. Right. And that is in the longer line of them saying, we want less damage. Like, that's why they took away Perplex. They want less instances of you being able to easily raise your damage sky high. And picking up a heavy object, you can debate whether that is one or not. But... Yeah. Um, the golden rules, we won't really talk about the golden rules. Uh, we already talked about the, the one occupancy major, one. The major change. Yeah. Otherwise, I think it's all normal. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, replace that. It was not a golden rule and now is, but it's all stuff that, like, none of the rules are new other than the change to occupancy. Yeah, and they pretty much all are self-explanatory. When you're reading Replace the Modify, yes, it's exactly the way it was before. Um, it took me a second to reread that. I'm like, oh, that sounds funny. But then I realized, yeah, no, that's how it's always worked. I just, you rarely have those instances where you would have all of those things line up. So, um, One thing I like, is it in here? It might not be. It might be in the rule book. They actually added a timing to when you have a value. It is not in here so we can talk about that later but i'm glad they did that um improved abilities we won't go into that really because that was all covered in a, a rules yeah, article but there's no change that we didn't know about for and don't worry everyone first turn immunity is the same they didn't change first term immunity rule of three is the same don't worry I don't know why they even call them silver rules. I don't get the point of golden rules and silver rules. Like, um, so basically, it's supposed to be silver rules trump the, anything in the rule book and any card. Golden rules trump silver rules. Do they ever explicitly say that in the rule book somewhere? It was said when they first started talking about golden and silver rules, but I don't think that there's circumstances where golden rules can interact with silver rules. Um. <laughs> So I don't know. Uh, uh, so looking at the rule book, it actually says, Heroclix has a few rules that can't be overruled by any effect. These are golden rules, including those on cards that would normally be allowed to break the rules, in quotes. An effect that tries to break one of these rules is ignored. So that's golden rules. Silver rules, is they're similar to golden rules, except that some effects are allowed to override them. Which oh, is, yeah. I mean, I guess that's fair. Which doesn't make sense. What breaks the rule of... What breaks first turn immunity? 
Uh, Kobik, the blue cube. I guess so. All right, fine. All right, you win. <laughs> I, I mean, was... I guess technically it doesn't because it's not doing any of those things. Right. Like, but I, I think it is easier to just say, yeah, there, there are things that can get around first turn. I'm, I'm just it... sitting here thinking like. First turn immunity is those one things that WizKids has always been a staunch defender of. Like anytime we f- try to find something that breaks first turn immunity, they treat it almost like a golden rule. Like, right. good, like the whole uh, mini shredder. Three. Go ahead. And like the rule of three, I don't know. Like, there's the rule of one, Mister Terrific, but Tyler mentions Mastermind for I guess the first turn immunity thing. What, yeah, what's that? Um, it doesn't get around first turn immunity. I guess if you move someone out of your starting area and they try to shoot that person I, and they No, mask- he's talking about like if you're playing the map bonus and you move somebody adjacent to the peasant that gets mastermind from the map and the peasant hasn't done anything, that you can mastermind the peasant. Right, but, yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about. Like if you have someone yeah. who still has first turn immunity to mastermind too right so i guess that's an instance uh that's not a fun one but Uh, again though it doesn't do any of the things right exactly it doesn't because it skips the or targeted by right um oh i'm sorry um we did skip uh well no it's not in that never mind never mind we're getting to it um tyler's saying even if it would be illegal is what it's listed in mastermind What's, again, that what, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Tyler. He says he thinks it's fun. We'll talk about that another time. No, it works. Like, absolutely, it works. Right. But also, I don't think Mastermind says, yeah, or would be an illegal target yet. Like, um, it isn't an illegal target because it is a legal target if it becomes targeted. Right. Like, it definitely just works. Like, there's no... Yeah, you can't be targeted. It doesn't say you can't become targeted. Right. Now, if it said that, then we've got a problem. <laughs> yes, then it would just not work. Right. Uh, well, it could work because it's a silver rule, not a golden rule. So. Right, right, right. All right. Um, autonomous has changed. Um, technically, it doesn't really change in a real way. Um, they just got rid of the word costed. So that's really the big difference. It used to say, I mean, that's... yeah, it's the same thing. It's just they wanted to get rid of the word "costed." Yeah, uh, cost and actual cost. Yeah. Most of these powers are the same. Uh, great size, we know the changes. Great reach, we know the changes. Immobile, immune, are the same. Did not back the same. Always say opposing. For who? Did immune always say opposing? I don't remember. Uh, I have the other pack up. Let me look. Immune says opposing game elements. Yes, it is. Okay. We're the exact same. Yep, that's right. Not bad. Passenger? Yes, passengers. Re- well, passenger and safeguard. So, passenger, right. biggest difference. I think this is uh, out of all of these, which I think is great. So, passenger has actually removed, and I'll show people the previous pack. I guess I could have been doing this, Just doing it side by side. Um, passenger used to say. You can use the carrier ability to carry up to X characters, including characters that are the same size that don't have the flight symbol. And this says basically the same thing, um, except it doesn't have the whole flight symbol thing, which is huge. And a lot of people, have, this is another one like Stealth and Outwit. People would look at it and be like, why? Well, like, just because I can fly, someone can't carry me? Like... Is it like a bro code or something where it's like, yeah, nah, man, you can fly. You fly yourself. <laughs> Do it yourself. Yeah, come on, man. I'm super. I don't have to carry you. Like, I, I don't. It, and it, it's great. It helps a lot of things because there's a lot of. Helps a lot of taxis that don't have that clause in there. Like, I believe Pharaoh had the clause where you could carry flyers. Maybe? Uh, I don't remember who. I, there are some. I just. I can't brain right now. Uh, let's see. Pharaoh. No, she just have passenger three. So this helps her too. Uh, I think Colson was one. Yeah, Colson definitely carries flyers. Yeah, Colson was one. Uh, could Lila carry flyers? 
Uh, no, she carries bigger people. Uh, no, she may carry up to four characters regardless of their speed symbols. So yeah, she could. Uh, I thought it was damage symbol, or I thought it was they were giant. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. So there were there were a couple that could, and they just elevated themselves higher than the others. But Pharaoh, I was talking about Waldo earlier. Like, there's certain taxis that you're like, that's great, but I'm using a flyer. That stinks. Like, if there's job as the phasing teleport carry people, like half of the Green Lanterns, like... Oh, they changed the Green Lantern well, team ability that, to that's... carry flyers. <laughs> yeah, that, I guess that's true. <laughs> yeah, Robert Valentine mentions that also. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, like, screw you, Green Lantern. We'll give you that cool team ability, and then we'll just make it pointless. Just kidding. In the same set. Yeah, so the I love this change. I it doesn't hurt anything. It literally makes it makes me more excited about certain taxis. No, it makes the ones who could already carry flyers be overcosted now. I'm sure. Joking. I'm sure. Joking. Oh, and we didn't sure. mention this. I'm sorry, we totally didn't mention this. Carrie has changed. Carrie no longer has a speed negative. Oh, we. Have we even got to carry yet? Where Carrie was in inherit abilities, and we skipped. Oh, it. oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so they completely did away with when you carry someone, you minus your speed value. So yeah. when you have a Green Lantern, I always hated that when you have a Green Lantern that's like I could carry like six people and move with two. Sp- speed. <laughs> yeah, move two squares because I have a <laughs> terrible speed value. Like that's all gone now. So that's great. Once again, it emphasizes a much faster game, more aggressive. You could carry. You don't have to spend your perplexes on speed now. You can move them out there, and you got your whole speed to do it. So, great idea, great change. One that probably could have used an article, but who knows? Yep. Um, protected works the same way it did before, and it's now just called safeguard. Yep. That's it. Now remember, this is giant protected because they still reference little protected. Uh, later for protected outwind and protected pulse wave so um it, can you read the old sideline active old sideline active yeah old sideline active is this effect can be used while this character is on the sideline it's the exact same okay so interestingly enough something i never realized like that means that effect can be used while they're on the map as well um, because it doesn't say that you can't use it otherwise, right? So, like, if you look at a trouble art, let me read how that's worded. Place a character from your sideline. So, never mind. But, like, so, like, the, uh, allies, though. Yeah. That give sidekicks and stuff plus attack and damage. Yeah. That applies while they're on the map as well. And I did not realize that until, like, earlier today. Yeah, I, I think, um, I think I knew that because it's, it's just sideline active and it's a unique modifier, so Yeah. Yeah, I just thought it was only when they're on the side. Gotcha. But that not. that might alter a few other things. I mean it's not different, but I think like that rogue And that's yeah, that's how it always should have been. I just never really paid that much attention, I guess. Yeah. I me mean, actually me neither. Um Stop <laughs> is the same. Sorry people, stop is the exact same. They didn't change anything. Um yeah. not that they really needed to, but um, swim, I, swim ability. We knew this change. Once again, I'll emphasize. You love this change. Yes, thank you. Dolphin people, um, and I don't mean like people who are dolphin people, but people who have mm-hmm. the swim ability. Finally, they're not just like, hey, I'm sitting in water and I get plus one to my range, a defense against range. Yay me. Like, I can do it. Now it's like awesome. It's like, ha ha, I'm in the water. <laughs> you can't shoot me if you're four away, which totally makes sense if you're shooting in water. Like, you've seen uh, uh, MythBusters and all those where they're like shooting guns in water, and it's doesn't go nearly <laughs> as far as you think. So, um, great change. Tiny size is the same. Unique modifiers the same. Everything else is the same. Yep. Um, even the size chart is the same. Yeah. Um, there's really nothing else different on this sheet. Oh, I think that's it for the pack. Yeah. So that was a lot of changes from what we already knew from the the uh, rules articles. Then we get to the rule book. So keep in mind, once again, the caveat for those who weren't with us earlier. We are assuming 
we are getting another rule book. Um, for like advanced play. So it'll be, I think it'll be like the comprehensive, but probably not so technical. But there is a ton of stuff that's just missing, and I don't think it was an accident. Right. And I'm hoping that, you know, everyone keep. Hold on, hold on. So, like, a, a good example of things that are missing and I don't, that I think oh. was intentional. Um, the very first thing in the rule book is how to win. And yeah, it just. Says, sorry, PJ. Just, just, just wait till your kid can start running around. Like, he is. Well, he opening is. doors. And... Oh, he can. He can. He was just in here a little bit ago. That's how he was in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> He just came busting in, opened the door, and he's like, me, me, me. I'm like, All right, come on, buddy. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyway, but sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Like how we're missing, like, stuff that's obviously left out is the very first thing in how to win. It only talks about eliminating your opponent's force. It doesn't talk about, like, the force, scoring the mercy rule. And they could just do away with it. But they just did mission points, so we know that that's not going to go away. Um, so I think there's a lot of depth that is intentionally left out of this book because they're not considering it a core rule. Like, right. beginners could play the game exactly how this book says it, and it would be fine. Right. But it is just very dumbed down. And they could always come but around and, and say, like, the, the mercy rule, maybe that's something they only want for competitive play. Like, they could right. create yeah. a, a separate thing and say, hey, if you're at a WizKids sanctioned event of this tier, that's when the mercy rule is coming in. Like... If you're playing at your local shop, don't do the mercy rule. You know they could do something like that, but I I also kind of expect that rule will be gone because I think that was only brought about because of you don't mind. So, um, um, well, there's been instances recently where people have been mercy ruled with the trouble alerts and all the stuff you could bring in. Yeah, but, I mean, I can probably I can count on one hand how many times that's happened. And, well, Wicker Co and Revival. Oh, that's true. That yeah. could happen pretty easily now because yeah. that that starts adding up fast. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, but I, I will say, like we said, I hope that we don't get a... Like, I hope we get just a more advanced core rulebook and not another comprehensive. Because, for me personally, I hated trying to remember where a certain phrase or something was. And having to go back and forth and be like, alright, was that in the co core book? Or was that in the comprehensive book? Because, like, they should just have one rulebook that has all of that. Like, they have this one. For new people, for for le for basic hero clicks play, when they come out with a comprehensive, have all of this in there, and then yep. add all the advanced stuff. To, and they can leave out the fluff, right? Like the stuff that's given. Like we don't need to know what a combat dial is in that rule book. Right. Like we don't need we the pictures. Know what a combat dial is. But just keep it pretty, please. Keep it pretty. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, look, uh, we need to go back to that. Yeah. This rule book looks amazing. It's, like yeah props this is so much more appetizing to the eyes like this is what it always should have been this makes me want to look at this book it's not just a black and white blurb of words and, and like, I, I i will it's big and vibrant like it's, it's just it's good and i will also say kudos to whoever worked with dc to actually get them to go along with this because remember dc if you remember looking at any of your hero clicks cards like Marvel would always give you the back of the cards and they there was a time where they would always be like here's the comic here's the picture of the comic you know you could go find about the significant appearance here but for a while I feel like DC just had the figure on the back like the yep. the sculpt they would they would tell you what the comic was but man you were not getting that picture of the comic you were just you just got the figure and I, I always felt less of DC at that point because I always liked looking at the back of the card and be like oh I could find X-23 in Venom Circle of Four. Cool. I'm going to go read that and figure out where, what this instance is. So, in this, maybe this is DC, you know, maybe it's just because they're trying to celebrate Wonder Woman a little bit more. But you've got what looks to be panels from comics. Like, you've got full art in here, really yeah. embracing things. And, and I, I hope this is the direction DC's going to where they're like, yeah, we're, we're finally embracing Heroglyphs. Um because I feel like that's just been a, a, a thing that hasn't been a thing. Um, so how do we want to tackle this rule book, man? I don't really want to go through Let's, every page. We can just talk about the big, glaring 
uh, either faults or changes. Yeah, so I think we could tackle those by going uh, page to page. So like, not and this not... is only a thirteen, essentially a thirteen page rule book. Yeah. So it is not in depth. Exactly. And, and I mean, even like the first page doesn't really have anything. It's just super basic concepts. It's literally titled basic concepts. Um, now Gifford Vaughn, but there's still tournament rules, which still has winning with points as a win condition. I don't feel like the tournament rules have been updated in years. Like they don't, yeah. they don't keep they up with... since that rule came out. Yeah, they they kind of it. That's kind of been out there, but it, if now if they're more aggressive with it and keeping it updated, sure. Um, that just remains to be seen. But yeah, the first couple pages, nothing's changed. Combat rules explaining clicking. Uh, play area. Oh, well, okay. Um, now play areas we'll cover later. The first one is on page four, and that's adjacency. So PJ, uh, PJ, you you were the one that mentioned this one. Why don't you explain why um, why there definitely needs to be more to, than to what adjacency says? Yeah. So it gives us a definition, right? It shows you a picture. It's a nice picture. However, it doesn't anywhere in this rule book talk about what happens if there's a wall between the red and the blue mm -hmm. or if there's a different elevation between the red and the blue mm -hmm. as of right now in just this book that would be an adjacent square i can punch you through a wall i can punch up elevations which people would obviously like because they missed that about leap climb but yeah, and it needs to be clearer and obviously they're going to fix that because they're not going to expect everyone to be punching through walls Right, and, and and this is one of those instances I was talking to PJ about where it's like, us as Heroclix players, we are very used to needing things explicitly told to us, like because we yeah. break the rules a lot. To, well, not we bend the rules to our will, and so we require people should be able to pick this book up, learn the game at home by themselves, show up to an event, and barely get anything wrong. Right. Like, experience should be the factor making it wrong, not the book. And like, if, if they make a mistake, sure, or if they missed something in the book. But if someone were to sit down with me at a tournament, and this is the current rule book, and they were like, I can punch through this wall, there's nothing that says I can't, I can't tell them they're wrong. Right. And it's insane. <laughs> yeah, and it's just one of those, like... Now, they do explicitly say instances when you can punch from an elevation to the other one, and it's it's the arrows, the whatever they call them. Um, yeah, the elevation changes. Yeah, whatever. the elevation changes. Like, they explicitly state, this is when you can punch someone, but they don't explicitly say, you can't punch them from any other instance. And right. I guess from a new player standpoint, thinking, oh, I am from the ground, and they're at the top of a building, I could punch them, I may not go there. Like in my head, like so, it right. may be just we are advanced players, and so we're used to like reading into everything, and we're used to not being able to do it. But now there's something that explicitly doesn't tell us we couldn't do it. So maybe it's we're the animals, <laughs> like we're the monsters in this case. Well, like, I mean, for me, when I was learning this game, I never could wrap my head around why my character that can fly can't punch your guy on top of a building. It can fly, <laughs> so I. I it's not that it's even that explicit, right? Right. Like, it and, needs to be said. And and that's what most of the is issues with the rule book is. Outside of the ones that are just blatantly missing, there are a couple. I feel like there's one or two other issues where um, it doesn't say it. Like it doesn't explicitly say you can do this or you can't do that. It just gives you other instances. So the other main one, and we could skip down because most of them are talking about powers and building a team. Um, which none of that's really that different. The initiative bonus theme teams, we already knew those changes, um, mm -hmm. which good changes, I, I think. You, I think you are going to pass because I haven't even talked to you about this one. Say what? I, I have one on this page in the building a team section. Go for it. Um, so a team can only have one copy of each unique figure denoted by a silver ring, but can have multiple unique characters. So... It doesn't didn't like actually tell you what makes it unique. So according to this wording, it says you can have a unique Hippolyta, but you can't have another one that wasn't unique. 
or that you could have another one that wasn't unique. But according to this, I could not have two different unique Hippolytus. Even if they're different set numbers, according to this wording, or I'm just or, or jokers, whatever. If I have two different unique jokers, I could not play them together. Per this rule. Per this wording. Uh, no, I don't think I would not I would not that. infer that because it's saying yeah. if your team has a unique Hippolyta, sorry if I'm mm-hmm. saying that wrong, you could have another Hippolyta that wasn't unique. Right, but it doesn't say that you can play another one that is. Right, but I yeah, think I think that's that I think that's reading a little too much into it where we're taking I, I, that I don't, because it doesn't tell you what a unique figure is. Right? It doesn't it used to explicitly tell you you look at the set number. But now it's just name and silver ring. Alright, let me look um, while you while you're saying that, let me I got the old yeah, like it was explicitly defined before and now we don't have an explicit definition. Now, I don't, I don't personally know of any situation that that matters. Um, I don't know of any two separate uniques of the same character. I mean, I'm sure it exists, um, but I don't know of any off the top of my head. So I don't know that that matters, but it could going forward. Now, it also could matter when it comes to sideline stuff, too, maybe. That is true. But yeah, once again... True. Yeah, I guess that I, I would say that would if I'm a new player, I wouldn't read too much into that. As a as a advanced player, I could see what you're talking about. I don't know if I would be that picky about it. Like if I was a judge, I wouldn't care. But I, I see what you're saying. I feel like uh, yeah, they are it's missing the set number though. thing. They're missing the set number thing, but they don't want new players to worry about set numbers. So, but but at the same time, like if they were to ask me what that means, I couldn't tell them that it means the set number because again they'd be like well why and i would have no answer right like the only thing that this tells you to go by basically is the name and the ring yeah that's that's fair and uh, uh dionysia we're, we're gonna get to page 12 don't worry we're we've got some quite a few other things to talk about in this um we get there. so once again theme team same as the the thing said before the rule the rules article um yep Nothing changed with that. They explain it a little bit better. I like the way they explained it. Probability is a standard power. Here's the power. If you're on a theme team, you can use it up to that. Like they explain it really well. They don't say. They did it great. Yeah, they don't say they can use prop control. See the pack to see what that means. Like, right. Yeah. I I, I liked. I, they did a very good job there. Um. So they do kind of say complete a win condition defined by the scenario. I guess that doesn't count like mission points. Yeah. I think that's actually like the scenario card. That they I know, are. but man, I'm trying to cut them some slack here. Nope. <laughs> um, so big, big, big change when it comes to setting up to play. You <laughs> have to greet your opponent. Um, some people don't. Some people grunt at your opponent. Maybe they lost the match before. Um, but it is now in the rule book. You have to greet them. Actually, I don't know if that was in before. I want to... It was not. I, I verified that. <laughs> I'm, I'm poking fun because the biggest change out of this is not the initiative bonus, but first player picks map. That's the same. Starting with the second player, each player chooses a starting area and puts their starting force on the map in their starting area. Um, and where does it say? Oh, yeah, it says it later. So it's now not I choose this side. First player puts out their stuff, uh, puts out their characters, Second player characters, first player objects, second player objects, and then special trains in there somewhere. Like, before objects, but after characters, or before character, I can never remember. And this is why they simplified it. Um, yep. Because that was a mess. But, this gives a new advantage to first player, because now first... Because they needed more. Right. Because below, it says setting up objects. If you're playing objects, place them at the same time as your character, which... In a local game, that doesn't matter because when you're sitting down, generally you got everybody kind of puts out their people at the same time, and everyone skips the beginning of game, like the the setup phase. But in a tournament, a lot of people are very particular, like because it matters, right? You gotta you want to know where their objects are. are. You expanding? Yeah. Am I expanding? So 
Now that we're putting objects out as your character, second player will put down their characters and objects first. Then first player puts down their characters and objects. So now they can kind of counter and say, okay, your speedster might be over there who's going to try to take my objects. I'm going to go to the other side of the map to do it. And it may not be that big of a difference in the grand scheme, but you have some flexibility. Well, and I think it's like it's backwards from what you're saying, right? I think it's more that if, if you and I are playing and you are going second, you have to put your object, and I get to now knowingly try to interact with your object. Right. Because I know exactly where it is. Right. I can set my team accordingly. Uh, yeah, exactly. It, it kind of, it's both. I mean, it's harder to interact with objects now. True. Like, but it still sucks, right? Like, <laughs> come on. The second player gets nothing. Every other competitive game, there is some type of strategic advantage to going second. Like, I've never played another game where I didn't consider going second. Yeah. And this is the only one where if you ever choose to go second, you just made a bad choice. In the downside, yeah, I feel like... Tyler speaks to me. He chose to go second one game. And one of the downsides, I feel like, to this is that I felt like we were going in a better direction because of the initiative bonuses, and now there wasn't yeah. as easy of a way to guarantee you got first. And now it's like, okay, well, if you do get first, here's a benefit to first player. And it's like, okay, yay. I mean, all right. I really thought that it should be... Um, if you win the role, you choose either you pick map or you go first. Yeah, I can see that. And then, I, I mean, I think that's fair. Like, if, if we play and you pick the map, I now get to go first. Or, if I want to make sure I pick the map, I have to let you go first. Yeah. I, I think that gives a strategic advantage um, based on what you're playing, right? Because some teams don't care about map, but they really want to go first. And alternatively, some teams really care about map and don't care if they go for it. I also so. almost wonder if, and this is getting a little cavalier, if you will, if there is something they could have done with first term immunity, maybe? Like, is that too, like, brazen or brazen or whatever to, to say, like, okay, if you go first, you lose first term immunity? <laughs> um... I think that's dangerous. I, I think I, so too, but I, I'm trying to think of like, what is a condition for me outside of the one you said that would make me be like, yes, I'm say I want to go second player, like, be, like I'm going to build an alpha strike team, and because now we basically got equal chance of winning map. Sure, there's a plus three, but so I don't have a guarantee that I'm going to lose map to go second or you know I don't know. It, it, this is not what we we're talking about today, but I, I was just thinking about it. What you were saying. I almost wonder if that would be enough of a desire to do that. All right. Um, so uh, beginning a turn, like all the overview of the game, all that stays the same. Now, if anyone's freaking out about active player, that's on the pack. I don't remember if we talked about that. Yeah. It's uh, on the pack. It, yeah. So unfortunately, in my, in my den, I think it's unfortunate but active player still determines the order of things when things happen simultaneously. Now, I do think they took out the wording about immediately. Like, in the old rule book, it says... Oh, like, immediately after resolution's effect? Well, it said, like, active player determines the actions unless something is immediate or something Right, like that. Yeah, that was because immediately after resolution happened. Right, but they took that part out. Like, the part about mentioning immediately. So I don't know if they're just removing the idea of immediately. Is there only... Oh, I can't, I'm trying to remember, was there anything other than pushing damage that was immediately after resolutions? Crit, crit misses. Ooh, find crit misses. Oh, yeah, is that in here? Uh, it's at the beginning. Critical miss is definitely in. Yeah, it's at the beginning. This thing's so slow. Attacker immediately takes one unavoidable. Yeah. Not immediately after resolution, so that's different. So that means if I flurry in crit miss, I take it right then, not after I finish the flurry. Is that that's in the pack or is that in the cool book? We're not there yet. Oh, okay. We're a page down. That, a that's pages. a that's a difference I didn't even realize. Yeah, I have I have to go very shortly. Oh yeah, let's well we I just like 
Yeah, all right. So we'll speed through to any other. How about this? Any other big talking points you want to talk about with the room? Um, the action phase says take up to three actions. Um, I think that will uh, probably get changed. But as of right now, if you play a 10,000 point game, you still only get three actions. <laughs> I don't think that'll hold. Um, I think this rule book is tailored to a 300 point game. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, they specify earlier most games are 300, so I think it that's why it says three, but I, I, I think that'll get clarified. Yeah, and once again, if we have any uh, WizKids people watching, um, we don't need to know what the comprehensive rulebook is or this advanced one. Just let us know that there's one coming. Like, that's all I want to know. Like, right. all we hear is, hey, this set drops in April, new rules go in effect, I think they said the beginning of May. Like, is when the new rules are officially in effect, or maybe whenever the set drops. I can't remember. Um, but they, like, if we don't have any inkling that this new rule book is coming, or, like, this more advanced version, we're just assuming this is going to be what we're stuck with. And we can't play competitive like this. I don't think there's a way, like, competitive could work. Because we didn't even talk, uh, we didn't get to talk about, we kind of skipped over what our, no, we haven't gotten to it yet. As of right now, you can't shoot from one level of elevation to the same eleva level of elevation if there's a lower elevation between right. them. Because it doesn't explicitly say you can. It says line of fire is blocked if it intersects a terrain of different elevation. And before... Ooh, I wonder. Uh, I'm going to look up a, a term here real quick. It used to explain that more in... in when it explained elevated terrain it used to say well this is how you could do it what we mean by terrain of different elevation is they mean like from one to two if yeah, it, they mean, it, it might actually mean of higher yeah i was trying to see if they clarify what they meant by intersect but they don't right so as of right now if i'm on two pj's on two and there's one in between us i can't shoot him as of this rule and that's probably because there's no maps that have that inner section in this battlegrounds like olympus is a hill in the middle so that's why right. this doesn't come up but um pj i know you gotta go uh, yes thank I think there's anything else that i'm like dying to talk about oh there's one i want to talk about real quick um uh batman got nerfed batman prime um now uh you split damage no matter how you multi-target it doesn't specify with what. what is that under uh dealing damage I think. Uh, let's see. If more than one character is hit, choose how that damage is split up. Oh, yes, yeah, so it doesn't rely on targets. Right. Poor Batman also, Prime. The line, right under that, the line right under that is a nerf to zero point or zero damage figures. Um, so you can't attack with a zero damage figure and try no, to. No, my Starro yeah. fights critically you know, attacking. Like, oh, you, can't even, you can't even get the YOLO one damage. Now, like, it's gone. caveat Rude. to all of this. It could. Rude. They could change it in the comprehensive. They could explain be in certain instances, but we don't know if a comprehensive is coming. We have no idea. Um, so PJ's got to go once again. Anybody that's watching, if you haven't followed and liked the Kilted Clicksman, do so. Yeah. He like he streams me. some stuff where he's somewhat good at gaming. I think. Every now and again. Uh, oh, I'm terrible at all other gaming than Hero Clicks. Let's make that clear. Yeah, I don't watch until he starts playing some TFT. That's when I'll actually start watching. Uh, so. I'm going to start that up here soon. So. I'm doing 10 But anyway, thank you, PJ, uh, for joining us. I'm still. I'm going to stay on, guys, if you, you're watching it. Go over Later. a couple other things. But see you, PJ. Bye. Uh... All right. Now, I know you guys probably all joined to watch PJ. Um, but I will answer any other questions you guys have about the rule book. Um, the other, only other changes, like I said, was the elevation to another elevation and the lower in the middle. That There's just so many things in this rule book that need some clarification. And I think the reason we're questioning this is because they pulled this out to say this is a core rule book. As opposed to saying this is a rule book that's in the battleground. Um, it's used for battleground play, but there's like I basically I just hope that Wiz Kids and maybe Scott mentions it in one of his videos, Scott Porter's videos, down the the rest of the week. 
maybe he explains, oh yeah, here's something coming down the pipes. Because we're all waiting to see about the alternative format um, that uh, Kenny mentioned was coming down the line too. So maybe they mention it and we're just all talking about it today. Um, but there's just so much. Um, there's been some debate about the rim, um, where you could shoot. Uh, this is all fine. But you can see here, line of fire can't be drawn from low terrain through higher terrain to low terrain, which makes sense. You can't shoot through a mountain. But it doesn't explicitly say, if you're on top of a mountain, shooting to another mountain, and there's a valley in between you. And Heroclix players... We need things explicitly said to us because otherwise we try to break things or we assume things are like you, you want to talk about explicitly saying things. Just talk about how people have felt about DJ Doom or about Uatu or all these other powers and figures that we have to base things off of what we think they meant. Uh, what was intent? You hear that word thrown around all the time. Intent. So a lot of these things that are missing things, we know that they're not supposed to, not intended to work that way. But we don't know yet. And actually, we're just surprised to see the rule book and the powers and abilities card. Um, a couple other things that they mention in here uh, that's a, a key, a, a big to do. Um, Advanced concepts, very small section. This could use its own rulebook, basically. Uh, loss abilities and powers is basically the same. Multi multiple copies of powers is fine. Size, we've already talked about. Name tokens. Um, I don't. I feel like name tokens was in there before. Generate was one of the powers they said they were fixing. Um, generate was the phrase they were using instead of place. Like when Groot creates the little Groot, the little walking wood, or or. Uh, the penguins make the penguins or something like that. It's now generate instead of place uh, because there was some confusion with place and place, like place with a TK in place when I create a pog. So they did fix that. Um, names, this could be something. Uh, when an effect looks for a character's name, it looks for an exact match. For example, Wonder Woman Princess of... Uh, I'm not going to say that name. Would count for a card that looked... Wouldn't count for a card that looked for Wonder Woman. Well, it doesn't have any of the clauses that talks about the or abbreviations from Doctor. So, how exact of a match does it need? And I feel like in the rule book, they mentioned before, um, when it looks for a name, it's okay if it has like the, like the thing, as opposed to thing. But, uh, Dionysio, so what... So about what PG was saying regarding adjacency, it says on page 12, blocking train blocks on a fire, and it says like a wall. So the problem with that is that we're talking about things that don't take line of fire. So blocking like a wall or huge thick bookshelf, line of fire. So yes, you couldn't shoot out of adjacency. We're saying punches. Because remember, if I'm doing a close attack... I don't need to draw a line of fire. I just am able to hit someone in an adjacent square. Adjacent square currently only says it's a square next to the other one. It doesn't say anything about it's not considered adjacent when there's blocking ter uh, when there's a wall in between. That's what we're saying. And that's most likely because none of these maps, I bet, have a wall. Like, I bet they don't even really use walls. Or at least don't have on the same elevation. Or elevate. Well, I guess they have elevation. But maybe they don't have elevation that doesn't have a rim. I, I remember Olympus. I don't remember the others. But what we're saying is that there's nothing explicitly saying that a wall and elevated prevents from punching each other. Because of how adjacency is worded. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, that's what we were meaning by that. Um... It says any line of fire drawn through blocking terrain is blocked like a wall. And I know it says blocking is like a wall. But remember, when you're punching, you don't draw a line of fire. It's just a punch. Um, so, yeah, I'm wondering how names is going to work. Uh, I assume it's going to work like before, but who knows. This is the biggest thing. <laughs> um, so, once again, they list the sideline, which... As competitive players, we all know, sideline is a big to-do. 
The sideline is the third play area in Heroclix. Some characters will put themselves onto your sideline. Some characters will begin the map as normal but let you swap them with other characters from your sideline. Other characters will allow you to include characters on your sideline during force construction. Your sideline is next to the map, clearly separated from your KO area. That's it. That is all they say about sideline. That's it. No limitations. Doesn't say anything about how you can only put three per 100 points. So, you could do, your sight light could be infinite if you wanted to. If we had to go by this rule book, just by this rule book. Once again, we are assuming there is a rule book coming for the more competitive and advanced players that spells things out like they would before. Because if they were making that change, they would have done a rules article about it. So don't panic. Don't start thinking about, I need to buy all these trouble alerts or buy all these allies because I can play every ally on my sideline to prepare for any team I face. Like, that's not going to, most likely not going to be a thing. Um, we are just pointing them out because if you believe in, like, a multiverse scenario, there might be that one scenario where... We do have this rule book, and that's it before we get the comprehensive. Like, we might get the comprehensive. And keep in mind, we're st still in the middle of the pandemic a bit, so there's not a lot of tournaments happening. Um, so they might say, okay, well, Battlegrounds is for home play, and there's a pre release, so maybe this isn't the right argument, but they may not feel like there's a lot of tournaments coming up, so there might not be urgency. They would rather get the comprehensive right and take time. So there might be a one-month period where we're this is the new rules. We don't have updated rules um, for some of these things. And I think at that point, it's up to the judge to use their discretion. I would probably, if I was judging and if I was doing the Rock Online stuff, I would probably just say, if it's not explicitly stated in the rule book, we'll utilize what the rules were before um, until we get a better comprehensive... Um, let's see Robert Valentine I feel like they intended the damage description to apply when using bolts for close attacks since they reference bolts repeatedly in the steps up to the signing damage but at the same time I have always said that the game is less about intent than, than raw yeah the funny thing is, is uh, Robert is I feel like lately everything has been about intent like we all know what hero clicks, or what WizKids meant by doing certain things, but, and I don't know if it's because everyone's at home and we're so used to nitpicking everything, like hero clicks, like just the world today, everyone nitpicks everything, that maybe we're just, we need something explicitly told to us because we don't want to assume things, and we are now in this thing where we have to rely on intent on certain things. And that may not be how Hero Clicks needs to be. Maybe we need less intent and more like the DJ Doom thing about being able to switch out dice or whatever. You know, your the intent is probably not for it to work that way. And so Yeah. It, it's tough. Now we we have to assume some of these changes though are correct. Um the pulse wave, no single target pulse wave. That could be intent. Like, they could say, no more single target pulse wave. Maybe it's too much of a it factor or like a, a, a counter for everything. Because remember, that's one of the first powers that they said were going um, <laughs> when uh, they were removing some powers for the Wonder Woman people. So maybe they're like, it's too much of a counter. All I know is, is that, real quick, before we wrap up the stream... If I was going to look at the new rules, the new powers of the pack, and talk about some figures that I'm excited to play, that you should take an eye out and, and take a look at, because these are potentially going to be good. Um, definitely not Batman. <laughs> Batman's gotten way worse. Um, the whole map, losing map bonus, so not guaranteeing map. Um, the whole splitting, potentially splitting damage, no more pushing damage. Like, too many things. I feel bad for Prime Batman. Um, another person I feel kind of bad for is, as of right now, how Pulse Wave is written. All your Pulse Wave figures are now worse, because Pulse Wave for one damage is great, sure, but 
someone like Emperor Vulcan, for example, he wants to go around a pulse wave for four. He doesn't want a pulse wave for one. Um, but as of right now, new rules, he can only pulse wave for one. So his whole thing is like, okay, like what's the big deal <laughs> right now? What's the big deal to protect a pulse wave for him? He only takes one damage from pulse wave. Ah, ah, it's a bummer from from him. The big the character I'm most excited for with all these changes, if they stick, is I've always been a, um, I've always liked robot teams, and I've really wanted Omega to work. I haven't had a lot of instances to use her, but Omega now. If Pulse Wave holds true, is great because Pulse Wave was her biggest fear, because you could Pulse Wave her for five, she wouldn't get any of her tokens, and she wouldn't be able to raise up her stats. Um, but now she could, she can. Well, you only get Pulse Wave for one. Her combat value, she can still plus up her damage. That doesn't change. Um, she has Cosmic Energy with the Willpower, which is great. Uh, you, so you can't out with the shape change. You'd have to use Battle Fury. The added benefit also is you can now use Waldo, who is a robot, 40 points. Because, <clears throat> because remember now, he can he's a taxi. He has Passenger 4. He can now carry Omega because she has Flight. Um, he's great because Sikorsky's got Support, which you want for Omega. He's got Perplex, so you can even bu bump up her stats even more. He could be a taxi. Like, he's great for 40 points. Great for 40 points. Um, let's see, Robert, you're saying I wish they would split the difference and lock it at 2 damage. Significant, but not allowing for one-hit KOs. <sighs> the problem with Pulse Wave, I assume you're talking about Pulse Wave. You can't lock it at 2 damage. Because there are, I think, still retail with just toughness. Like, we, when we think of retail, we only think of Dark Phoenix, but... Let's see, Iceman I think has nothing, so I guess he would just take it. Who else doesn't have it? Energy deflection, no. Maybe I'm wrong. Colossus, what does he have? He's got nothing either, he doesn't even have a stop click. Um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of other pieces that have stop clicks that really want to be able to at least prevent the the one damage pulse wave because they have reducers or, or something like that like i don't know if i had toughness and just you blanketing coming up and pulse waving me ah uh, i don't know it may not be that big of a deal now i guess i'm thinking about about like surter and those pieces but I don't know. And it may be a bigger deal, Robert, as well, because we don't know what this alternative format is yet. So all these figures that we mentioned that are gone could be back with all these new rules. So who knows? All I know is, is that today was a wild day. Uh, we didn't even talk about the new figures. Um, but that's okay. Uh, there's a lot to talk about with the rules the rule book and all this stuff i hope we get more insight to that i hope we get um thank you emily tri sentinel has toughness i forget tri sentinel exists because uh they got nerfed in the watch list yeah there you go there you go but yeah there's so many unknowns but i wanted to do this live stream so that way you kind of were uh not uh, not my kids watch frozen to uh, lately so maybe so you're into the unknown uh i know that's a da bad dad joke but uh yeah so we kind of venture into the unknown together so that way we're not blindsided because i am looking to start doing some more uh rock online events because we haven't had any this year really but one i'm looking to start trying out some of these new rules um that way people could try out figures that they really haven't you know they're interested in maybe the omegas maybe uh, astronomer with the power gems some of these other cool things because we might <laughs> we might not have much time with them because i also am in the wheelhouse that we will know shortly about retirement because retirement happens in march so if nobody knows this retirement for the past uh, if you type in hero clicks rotation uh you can see 
2019 rotation, March 13th. Uh, it wasn't July 2nd. Here it is. March 13th. March 13th. Uh, if I went 2018, I believe it was later in March. The 21st. Uh, 2017, I think it was earlier in March. Yeah, the 9th. So we're sitting at, we're in March now. So we should know this month what happens with rotation. So we might be seeing ourselves in April, new rules, and we've only got two months to play with some of these cool figures like Astronomer and the Power Gem. Only two months to play with them because they would rotate most likely. So, but yeah, any other questions before I let you guys go? We I've been talking for almost two hours. So, um, any other questions, comments? Um, anybody that's still watching, feel free to like and follow the channel. I hate being one of those guys, but I'm trying to get to 100 people because that'd be great. I could do more things on Facebook. I'll wait a, a minute or two. See if I got any more comments. Um, if anybody wants to know about Click Stop stuff, um, we will be recording an episode, most likely shortly, to talk about some of these new, uh, new figures and other stuff. And listen, if you all have any questions about any of these rule stuff, uh, don't be afraid to to reach out to any of us. Uh, Dionysio, no problem. Uh, that's why we're here to help. Well, I come through this probably about three or four times, and me and PJ were going back and forth talking about all of these new rules and the pack and what's changed. And he'd be saying, "Holy crap, this happened! Oh no, this happened!" Uh, so Oscar, so barrier now can be placed in water and hindering. Yes, that is one of the things that is probably not changing in the comprehensive. Barrier mentioned before uh, that it has to be clear squares. Um, it doesn't anymore. It just in distinct squares. So you could put them now. You can't put them in blocking, though. We mentioned before. I, I don't know why you would, but we mentioned before in the rule book. You technically could put them in in blocking right now. But as of right now, how it should work as intended, uh, barrier can go in any square. So hindering water, all of that, which kind of makes sense for barrier. Gifford Vaughn quickly new. Chase Wonder Woman, yay or nay? So if you're talking about the title Wonder Woman, uh, Scott D. Uh, I don't know how to say his name. D. Uh, August. Uh, I forget. Um, Wizkid Scott. He came out and said that's a super rare. Uh, number sixty one is actually a super rare, and I thought it looked kind of like a chase, uh, a super rare, but maybe a chase. Um, but the one in Scott Porter's video for day one was a title super rare Wonder Woman. It was not a chase. I know that much. He came out. Augustino. Maybe that was his last name. I can, I'm terrible with names, people. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, that's a super rare. Not a chase. So don't worry. She's cool, though. Um, when I first saw her, um, and I don't know who has her up. Let's see. Dishing up clicks, maybe. Let's see. think he has the screenshots screenshots nope wrong wrong one here we go if anyone's questioning uh watch the scott porter video first off uh but there she is yeah her that's actually a super rare yeah it's a super rare uh but when i saw her her power i laughed um i laughed so hard because i just loved her five power uh free turn wonder woman princess of blah 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 to click 11 she has cosmic energy safeguard pulse wave and she can't be damaged at the beginning of the game if there are no other friendly characters with the amazon keyword on the map you lose the game i just love that i just love that they're like hey yo if you don't have any of these characters on the map you lose like just done like i i just laugh i don't know why that tickled me so much but it just tickled me that's like hey if you don't at the beginning of your turn if you don't have any amazon people sorry you lose game over uh, and i mentioned you know we have alternate win conditions this is obviously an alternate lose condition um but she's got a lot of potential 
Um, being able to not be damaged, you could just send her out and she'd just go crazy. So, does the equipment work independently of her trait? Um, it's standard equipment. Um, it, like, it, it's normal equipment. Uh, so, it, it is something that you can use and whatever. They just give it Wonder Woman equipment because there's certain Wonder Women in this set that has the whole thing where they could start with any Wonder Woman equipment and then you could switch them out and stuff like that. Like, she references the Sword of Athena, but she doesn't even have that. She came with the Wonder Woman bracelets. Um... So yeah, like the equipment can trade out via its own instructions, even on older or newer Wonder Woman figures. Uh, trade out. Yes, it says uh, if the equipped character is named Wonder Woman. Now, funny enough, you wouldn't be able to actually use this with her um, in that instance uh, because she is not named Wonder Woman. She is named Wonder Woman Princess of... Themyscira, or whatever. So, funny enough, you couldn't actually use that ability with her. But yes, you could use it... Uh, uh, is it a free action for her? No. You know, I didn't even look at what her uh, her negative is if she's KO'd. Nah, it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, um... She's good. We'll pro I'll probably talk about her more on the the pot uh, the podcast i don't i feel like they don't know to title characters are always iffy with me like i was in a phase where i wanted to collect every single title character because i thought they were the coolest but i feel like they just kind of still don't quite know how they want title characters to work like the balance because i don't feel like we have good ones anymore like mother you could argue is okay um that's it yeah, like Harley was good. Title Harley was great for a while. But that's it, right? Like, what other title characters were there that were, like, playable? Deadpool was good for a hot minute before he got nerfed. Um, yeah, then Professor X happened. Yeah, title Professor X. Let's not get started with that guy. Um, yeah, I don't... <coughs> I don't remember. Like, title Strange was okay. Um... Arkham Asylum's Pillar Wonder Woman LC could be neat. True. And let's keep in mind, we are getting legacy figures. So, we could get some cool Wonder Women coming back. And they could be modern. Uh, Thor Odinson. The problem with Thor Odi o Odinson, Odinson, he was cool, but his point value just didn't work. Like, he was, what, 175? And so, at the time... All the other Asgardians were just too expensive. Like, if you wanted a cheap Asgardian, you had to go with Dragonfang. Uh, not Dragonfang. Who's the chick with Dragonfang? Valkyrie, sorry. Uh, you could play, like, early 30-point Dragon uh, Valkyrie. Play a couple of them with him. But he was just so expensive. Like, he did. if he was, like, 125, I may have been more game. Because he's the one that can heal the person and the character and bring the character over but you start going through all these as guardians from uh the set and you're like all right i could play jane foster but the good ones it's like okay uh hulk that's gonna take up too many points Groot thor way too many points uh angela would be exactly fine hella fine uh thor can't play that thunderstrike maybe beta ray would just fit with no objects or anything like it just he, all the asgardians were too expensive that that's was his problem he was too expensive uh robert mentions kang is solid i remember kang um the problem with kang i feel like and maybe this is just a good topic for down the road we could talk about title characters some more kang uh what was he in was he in uh it was earth x right Oh, no, 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 ABPI. Sorry. Um, he doesn't have any reducers. That was his main issue, I feel like, was that he, at the time, he could be taken out pretty easily. But he could see a resurgence. Now that damage is going to be down a bit. Yeah, I could see him 
he was. I remember he was annoying to play against in like sealed events and like team nats when we did this set. I remember he was super annoying to play against, but hmm. It's true, he is a lot better without pushing. And that's another thing, like, there's so much research that needs to be done now. Like, we don't have to worry about pushing damage. So now you don't have to worry, like, Mandarin is great. Uh, Kang is great. You have a lot of figures that hated pushing damage and now they don't have to worry about it. You've got all the people with cosmic energy that now have rollouts because they have willpower. Like, there's just so much now. And... A lot of people, I feel like, competitive players specifically, either rely on local tournaments or they rely on online tournaments or tournament reports from somewhere else. And we don't have any of that. So people trying to figure out what's good and what's not. You know, not everyone has the time to delve through. Not everyone can be like PJ and delve through, like, every unit. Um, they have to rely some on... Oh, this person plays top four at a win -a That's cool. What did he play? Oh, what's going on with this figure? Like, I do that all the time. And so now it's like, all right, I've got to spend the time to do the research myself because, you know, there's so much changing. Batgirl Shadow of the Bat is also a great title. You know, I forget about Batgirl because Batman Shadow of the Crap was probably the worst title character we've gotten. And so I forget she uh, exists because of this Batman. Which maybe he's better because of Inge... No, he's not good. Um, yeah, Batgirl was good. She saw play with uh, Green Arrow and some of the other figures. Because she had the perplex. She had the prob. She could carry him, I think. Or there was some, some combo with her. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little sniffly because of allergies. You know, Robert, maybe they were doing you a favor because no one should ever play this Batman. For 100 points, like, he pales in comparison to Batgirl, who's 30 points less. Probably, arguably, top three worst title characters ever made. Professor X, Dionysio is up there, too. It's like Batman, Professor X, and the Avengers Infinity Captain America. You know which one I'm talking about. The one that just does nothing. Where is he? Captain America Principal. Nah, he had the blocking thing. So, no, maybe not him. Maybe it's the Earth X Cap. I'm thinking of. There's one Cap that wasn't that great. So, Captain America Resilient. Nah, he was pretty good with the, the Hulk. So, maybe I'm wrong about Captain America. So, I don't remember. <laughs> But, yeah, man, title characters, I don't know. I I love that it's a mechanic that's been around now for, it's been around since Deadpool. Not that Deadpool. Four years. It's been around four years. Um, and I don't feel like they've... Now, Oscar, the Star Trek ones, they're not bad. It's just we didn't get enough. I don't. I wouldn't say they're bad. It's just Star Trek wasn't good enough, I don't think. Like, what they did on their own was good. Like, being able to bring in a Starfleet or whatever when you have a certain amount of plot points. Like, th thematically, that they were good. It's just Starfleet themselves weren't good enough to bring them, like, to bring them up. Like, there wasn't enough Starfleet for me to feel comfortable playing them, I guess. So maybe you're right. Maybe they aren't They aren't great on their own. They're great if you were only playing a Starfleet team. Like, like if you had your own format. <laughs> but, yeah, they just need to do... Every so often I'm happy with some title characters. Like, I thought Magneto wasn't that bad. I thought... Uh, Joker wasn't that bad as a title character. As a call-in, he was pretty great for the brief moment he could be called in. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. There was that brief period where we didn't think we were getting any title characters. 
Like Mr. Sinister, no one plays him. It's like the the title character point cost is just a little too high for all of these. Mother is probably the first one that I feel like they nailed it out of the park of how a, a title character should be. Because all these title characters are way too many points. Mother, 35 points, brings all the support power. If she dies, it stinks. But at the same time, she gives them benefits to dying. So she's great. She's the first title character that I'm like, worth the points, amazing. This is how title characters should be. But I feel like they add point costs to the title characters. But then they give them a bad continuity if they die. So it's like... Like, title Susan from this recent set. She's got the mission point thing going for her. But besides that, she's not good. Uh, like, not meta good. Now, if someone is able to work her out with the new dolphin symbol, she might be better. Because now she can't be targeted from four away if she's in water. So, maybe better. Uh, the Reed Richards, he gets played a lot, mostly because of Molecule Man. The Reed Richards Fixer of the Universe. I could go on and on about title characters for a while. Um, I probably won't. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll save that for like a different stream or, or a, a podcast or something, because it's, it's interesting, I think, to go back and look at a history of hero clicks. I wish we could almost get like a Ken Burns. Does anybody know who Ken Burns is? Uh, he's the one that does those Civil War documentaries and whatnot. Um, and he, he's the one who crowned the current, the Ken Burns effect that has a certain thing with documentary. That's a little bit about uh, television and video editing and making. Um, that's a part of my background. Um, but like it would be interesting to do like a, or if you want a sports reference like a 30 for 30 like espm thing going back and looking at different mechanics or different things interviewing people during those times like i think it would be great to have something like that and if i had a little bit more time i would do it um but just to be like hey let's let's look back at how hero clicks was in 2016 like remind ourselves what we went through like who won what sets came out how was the meta like because it, it it's really hard or easy to forget how things used to be like when we were going through previous sets before and i think we've talked about it on the live stream with um you know if we if they had ultimate formats people forget how bad this span of the meta was this five month span from TMNT3 to Elseworlds before we got Thor. This was a bad, bad time, balance wise. Because you had the Shredders that just came out. You had um, Deadpool come out, which people were like, okay, maybe this will help s stop the Shredders. But Deadpool didn't really create very much in, in the way of meta. Like, all of the chases weren't played. Like, they just weren't. The, the cool. Uh, comic effect panels like they were played a little bit but none of these took off not even unicorn pool then we got adw which was the whole yes emily i was just about to get that sam cap sam cap was awesome but adw also brought you hawkeye which that dominated the meta at the time and then everything else in avengers defenders war was shifting focus and sculpt reuse remember i remember this set was a pain in the butt to collect because collation was a little poor there was so much sculpt reuse some of the shifting focus weren't that great strange was great but like punisher uh electra no electra wasn't one yeah this was the first version of electra uh some of the others just were meh the rares weren't that great outside of the uh doctor strange and maybe bat rocks awesome play Doctor Strange title was the first title character that was I was excited for, but still didn't see that much play. And then the rest of the set, I mean, if you look at the super rares, none of these really hit it out of the park. Iron Man was kind of cool because he could choose powers, but it took him a bit to get fixed. It was the chases. Chase Hawkeye was amazing. Too dominant. 
Ironheart was great for a 25 point piece. And then Sam Cap, everyone knows what happened with Sam Cap because you could carry her across the field and she could call in somebody. I didn't like AD very much, but did I like Elseworlds or more than what if? Then we get to the, the celebration. What if, I forget what year, 15th anniversary, what if, and Elseworlds. Those also had bad collation. Uh, or should I say they just didn't have amazing figures in them. Like top to bottom, no one played any of these figures outside of one or two. Like no one played any of the commons, uncommons, None of the rares. Nico, maybe, because she could pick a power. There are two pick a powers. No one played any of these. No one played the super rares outside of Cosmic Spider Man bef- until he was nerfed. Uh, Peter the Hunter, maybe. Goblin King saw the biggest play. Peace Machine was the most annoying, annoying piece <laughs> out of all of this. Was stupid Peace Machine because you tagged him with Mini Shredder because you're like, all right. Take out Mini Shredder, it got to deal a lot of damage. Well, I play Peace Machine, you can't do that anymore. Like, this was the most frustrating time. And this is when I became significantly more involved in the competitive scene. Like, this is when I played a lot more. I went to Nationals and I went to these different events. Uh, No, I went to Nationals the following year. I went to the, this was my first Rock Cup that I went to was that year. And then the chases weren't very good. Like the Venom chases, Poison, you only had four of them. And then we got Elseworlds, which Elseworlds had some cool things going for. But even then, none of these super rares, none of these, none of these super rares were played. Elijah Snow maybe was too gimmicky and too expensive. None of these saw play. Maybe the reviving Green Lantern. And then the only chases that saw play was Green Arrow who saw a ton of play with ID. And I played the Robin once or twice because the Bat Wing was a great taxi. Yeah, so I called this the Dark Age. Like, this was the Dark Age of Hero Clicks because it was just so unbalanced. Mini Shredder was everywhere. Hawkeye was everywhere. Green Arrow was everywhere. And we hadn't even gotten to Unimine at that point. But I, I feel like TMNT... Uh, sorry... The Mighty Thor was when we started getting out of that Dark Age. Things started to get a little bit more balanced. Because also, keep in mind, you could throw Joker's Wild in there in the Dark Age too. Because that's when we got Bizarro Green Arrow. And Ha Ha Joker. And Jakeem. So it's like this section here is when the competitive scene, when we had just gotten TMNT2, uh, Sinister Foes, Civil War, Uncanny X-Men, those were all kind of like, ah, okay, a couple pieces, not very good. I mean, there wasn't a lot. And then, bam, meta-defining, meta-defining, meta-defining pieces, set to set to set. And it just became overwhelming because there wasn't a lot of variety. There was just a whole lot of, all right, I'm going to play Bizarro Green Arrow. I'm going to play some Peace Machine. I'm going to play this. Now, Bizarro Green Arrow fell off when Hawkeye came in because Hawkeye could kill him. But then Hawkeye was dominant because you could play him with the giant girls that we got later and just dominate because you could just have such a high theme. He went, he just shoot everybody. So, but it's instances like this that people forget those ages and it could be their new players. They never experienced it, but that like, that would be a documentary or 30 for 30 that I would want to do is explaining the dark age. Not, I don't even want to say dark age, but like a, I don't, I don't know what would be a good term for it. Like the, the time the competitive scene was thrown so off because I think there was just too many meta defining pieces. Like, sure. You can argue, okay, what about Nick Fury? Like that, the balls of fury one, that was rough. And the Ultrons and all of that. Sure. But I feel like this period here, starting with Joker's Wild, which is funny, Joker's Wild in and of itself was not a great set. But when you go back and look at it, you're like, okay, I loved Anarchy. Anarchy was a great figure. I loved Anarchy. Um, outside of that, it's like, eh, eh, eh well, uh, 
No, 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 no. I love the penguin. The penguin's my favorite piece that they've made in a long time. And that was it for me. But I loved Haha ha Joker. He was cool in concept. Jakeem was annoying to play against. The Bizarro figures weren't good outside of Bizarro Green Arrow. So. Now I want to know if you play War of Light and what do you think about that. So. I, I will say this. I did not. I was not playing Hero Clicks when War of Light was the event. Like I didn't play in the War of Light event. But I did play when War of Light was legal. So I remember all the lanterns. I remember how oppressive they were. Um, I guess I feel about them a little bit differently. Dionisio. And I'm sorry if I call, can I call you Dio. I, I say your name wrong. Dionisio. Am I saying that right? And, and good night, Robert. Thanks for watching. I um. They were oppressive differently, I guess, for me. I, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like... Back in those times in, in War of Light, when that was legal, we had Guardians of the Galaxy legal, which you had, you know, Jason of Sparta, who was great. You had, I, I loved playing Shriek um, with, uh, uh, what battery was it? Indigo battery. Uh, you had the Rocket Raccoon that could redo things, a reroll. You had Beyonder. You had the, oh, Super Scroll. So yeah, I guess Super Scroll and War of Light section, sure. But... I don't know, like, they were oppressive, like, there was, like, one or two things that were oppressive, like, you had Super Scroll, which was oppressive, you had Orange Battery that was oppressive, but the other batteries weren't that bad, like, it was mostly the Orange Battery that everyone hated, and then you got all these other sets, and you're like, okay, Guardians of the Galaxy wasn't that bad, set Super Scroll, Flash wasn't that bad outside of, I don't know, Zoom, Zoom was okay, Justice League? Eh? Like... Eh? There wasn't much. Yeah, Copycat was a big one, too. Yeah, that's a good point, Oscar. Um, but I, I think with War of Light, around that time, you just had a couple sets that had some cool meta figures, but nothing that was just like, bam, oppressive. Zoom was not bam, oppressive. Neither was Casey Flash. Wasn't... Oh, I got. If I'm not playing him, I'm wrong, or he's just dominating. They were great. Don't get me wrong, great figures, but it wasn't like War Light. All right, Gardens of the Galaxy was super oppressive. This was super oppressive. This was super oppressive. Like, I guess you can maybe do like a mini one with War of Light, Deadpool, and Guardians, uh, maybe. But I remember the Mexican Nationals almost having. A table of yellow or orange, some of them maybe red batteries. Yeah, the, the way I remember it is that, you know, I only ever played the brief time that I played that those were legal. I played Indigo, um, but I was still fairly new, so I didn't want to spend all that money on all the batteries. So I was able to hunt down a local Indigo battery. Um, but I remember at the end mostly seeing uh, orange battery if it wasn't uh, banned. No one ever played white or black. Um, they just weren't competitive compared to the others. Red I did see play. Orange I saw play. Yellow, uh, Indigo I saw play. Star Sapphires, is that the one that gives... No, Blue Lantern's the one that gives the Mystics, right? I can't ever remember. But the one that gives the Mystics is either Blue or Star Sapphires. I never remember. But I, I saw those play and... And I always liked the concept of resources. Um, I thought they were always a cool mechanic. It's just obviously this got out of hand. And I remember when they were tired, everyone's like, what are we going to use? What are we going to use? And then everyone immediately jumped on and remembered, hey, Pandora's Box and Rock of Eternity exist. So it's like, let's play those. Like I played Pandora's Box with uh, Resurrection Man and Dead, uh, Dead Man and Haha -Ha Joker, I think. So, it, 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 it's it's interesting. Now, Oscar Green is probably more stronger now than it probably was then. Uh, limiting free action is probably worse now. Well, especially since they got rid of no cost. It. Oh, man. I didn't even think about that. If they rephrased certain things. Huh. <laughs> 
But still, if if I'm looking at and I, and this might just be me remembering how I felt during that time when I played during this section, I remember that it was just so oppressive. I liked playing the penguin team, which I had the uh, the the teleporter at that point still. I don't think they had retired at that point. And I remember playing that. I played at the Rock Cup. Didn't do very well. I did okay. I made it to like the Rock Cup finals, but lost miserably in that. And that was also during the time that you still had things like uh, you had the yo-yo. Uh, where is she? The yo-yo Jean Grey. Remember her? She used TK and then she used it as a free action. So you could free action TK and then use a real TK. So TK up. Call in somebody. TK him back. I remember playing there in that time, and man, I remember playing J Major against J Major's Shredders, Nightmare. I remember playing against Hawkeye, Nightmare. Like it was so bad for Pog, so maybe that's why I'm. Uh, I, I remember I lost in the Rock Cup uh, the next year. I would have made cut, but I lost to Dave because he was playing uh, Goblin King. He was playing two seventy five Goblin King. And I was playing uh, Starro with the Danger Room, I think at that point i was playing some danger room and i remember playing him i was getting so mad uh not at him but at the situation and he kept apologizing he's like i'm sorry man i'm sorry because he was playing goblin king at 275 and no one wants to go against a goblin king which by the way this is kind of an insight for you people who are still watching me at 940 um if i mentioned this before if they go superior age uh, which was one of two. They either go Mighty Age or Superior Age. It's my bet. It's my bet for this alternative format. Goblin King is just going to be nuts. He's going to be so good, I think. Um, 275. He could pick three powers, I believe. is No, two powers. You can equip him. Got plenty of room to equip. He gets a rollout for his token because he's got power cosmic. He can... You could give him... He's got enough room for Exo if you really wanted to do that. Because you could always pick an attack power and then have the defensive powers. Uh, there were a couple other instances where it's just like... No Pulse Wave. Like if Pulse Wave stays how it is now. Like he's great. He's amazing. But that's depending on if they do the format back then. I don't know if they'll really do that. Mighty Age makes more sense. Because of this Dark Age. So if they come out saying, yeah, we're doing Superior Spider-Man and forward, new cards and forward, I'm going to sit here and be like, all right, time to do that 30 for 30 of Joker's Wild to Elseworlds. Because <laughs> that, uh, yeah, yeah, that uh, was not a good time in competitive scene, I don't think, personally. Um, Oscar, you said I have one Golden Age question. Does Cosmic Control Rod is it crap now? Because Power Cosmic is no more. Uh, so Power Cosmic will still be a old team ability, and if this was ever a Rada, like if they, like if I was a judge and we we're doing a Golden Age event, well, Power Cosmic is Cosmic Energy. Like those are the same things. It's a name change. So it would do the same thing. Like if you went to a uh, Majestics event, they would probably like Power Cosmic is still a thing. It's just not something that's given out now. Like they're not doing away with Power Cosmic. They've just renamed it to Cosmic Energy. So no, it, it's not garbage. Um, then again, I was never a big fan of Relics without Split Lips. So it's not really for me. But no, it's not garbage. Uh, you'd still get Power Cosmic. So it's it's still a fine Golden Age piece. Alright, well I ended up talking for like an additional 30 minutes that I had planned to. My voice is actually starting to go a little bit because allergies in the South is not fun. Let me tell you that. If anybody's looking to move to South, South, Southeast of the United States... I live in one of the, like, the allergy capitals of the world, or pollen capitals. At least it feels like it. So I don't recommend it if you have bad allergies. But yeah, I think that's going to be it. Um, I will stream more tomorrow or the next day in the event that we got new like rules and stuff. If it's an unboxing that just has figures, we probably won't. 
I will probably save figures and whatnot for the the set reviews and stuff like that. But if there's rules updates or we finally get hints at a comprehensive or if we learn about the new format, then uh, I'll stream again tomorrow. And hopefully Dan Dan had a little bit of a, a cold, I think he said. So uh, hopefully he's feeling better. But yeah, anybody that's still watching, please like and follow the Kuzinator channel. That'd be great. This is where I do my own private streams. And if I'm streaming with any of the guys, I'll... I'll go to click stuff and do it there on the click stuff one. But uh, I, I mostly talk about Hero Clicks, but I play other games like TFT. I'll be starting a Kingdom Hearts 2 randomizer, which if anybody's into gaming, uh, it's super cool. I'm hoping to start it maybe this week, maybe the next week. Um, but it's a Kingdom Hearts 2 randomizer. It's a uh, They take uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 and actually have got it in a way to where you can beat the game by getting certain things. Randomizers are awesome. That's why my channel's based off of randomizers. But anyway, um, I will be showing that more this week or maybe early next week. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys. It's been two and a half hours, way longer than I thought. But I love you guys so much, and it's so much fun talking to you. So I will catch you guys uh, next time. Thank you.